Hey, what's up, guys? Wanted to talk a little bit more about bullpens and cross-error play. I know I talked about um, this with you, uh, what was it, just uh, yesterday, I think. Um, but uh, I did want to sort of hammer the point home just a little bit more for you that um, when you're doing a cross-error play project, you really, really have to be careful about bullpen uses. So we'll go ahead and look up a couple of teams here and um, take a look and see what the problems are. Uh, the teams we're going to look at here are the teams that you're probably most likely to want to play in some sort of like cross-era play scenario, and we'll talk about some of the problems involved. This team needs no introduction, the 1906 Cubs. Now, we're not going to worry too much about the lineup here. I know that there's not that many players. I mean, good heavens, they only had 14 position players that played all season. Remember, you can't just come up with guys out of nowhere. And you, when you look at this, you're like, well, three of these guys barely played at all. Yeah, good luck. Good luck figuring this out. I mean, you're going to have to figure out some sort of system to um, uh, make sure that the catcher gets enough rest and to make sure that everything else uh, flows smoothly. But um, this is a lot different than um, your 40-man roster. Um, but the key here that we're talking about really is pitching, and this is, I think, where the biggest problems come. If you're going to be perfectly honest with yourself and do it the right way, um, you need to look at the number of games started by these pitchers against the number of games pitched. You know, So you can see Three Finger Brown only had uh, four appearances that weren't starts. Jack Feister had two relief appearances. Uh, Carl Lundgren had three. Jack Taylor had one. Orville overall had four. Right, so when you're looking at these guys who are taking up the majority of your innings, almost all of these guys were starting pitchers. The one who was the exception is Ed Rollback, who had nine relief appearances. And this makes it a little bit difficult for you, right? If you're playing with any sort of game that has any kind of fatigue system at all, whether it's realistic or not, you're going to run into a problem because your guys are going to be tired, especially since a lot of these starting pitchers are also your relief pitchers. You could look at this, if you're playing like OOTP and you have this set up, you'll look at this and you'll be like, oh, well, we have Jack Harper. Yeah, Harper started one game and pitched one inning in 1906, right? I mean, he's not going to save you, right? You do have Fred Beebe and Bob Wicker, but uh, between them, they had about 140 innings. I mean, it's not awful when you look at this, but if you're looking at these guys and you're saying, you know, how are we going to use them uh, realistically? I mean, Wicker had, of his 10 appearances, had eight games started, five complete games, right? Beebe, a little bit more of a relief pitcher, but not much more of one. Right. And again, as I said, with Harper, you're going to have problems. I haven't actually looked at this beforehand. As you know, I never look at things um, before um, I do whatever I'm going to do. Um, Harper, is this right? Yeah, he only had one appearance for the Cubs. He, his, he was with Cincinnati. All you have is him pitching in this June 6th game against the Giants, um, which the Cubs won in a laughter. And, uh, well, we don't know exactly what happened to Harper other than that he only pitched uh, one inning. And uh, that was it. In fact, I wonder if we could look this up a little bit here. Let's uh, take a quick look at this and see. I'm just sort of curious to know kind of what happened in this game. And, um, you know, we can always hop on over here to our New York papers um, and uh, sort of figure this out. What do we think? This is uh, June 6, 1906. So we'll probably go look at, uh, I'm thinking like the sun on June 7, 1906. We'll make a quick detour here. And see if we can't figure out when the world happened here and why this uh, starting pitcher pitched only one inning because baseball references of no help. Of course, all of this is really blurry as I'm looking at it. So we'll see what we can find. Um, yeah, here we go. And it's not telling me too much from what I can see. Yeah, there's not really much inf information here in this article about exactly what's happened to the uh, starting pitcher for the Cubs, which seems to have not been very important. You know what? The problem is that um, I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at the uh, right game, right? Let's take a look here again. Um, yeah, Jack Harper, who starts the game, and then there's like no information about when the world happened. Oh, here we go. A line ball hit Harper's hand in the first inning, and the Giant overall went to the box for the Cubs. Right. Notwithstanding that his team was 11 runs ahead, overall went ballooning in the eighth inning. He gave five bases, bases on balls and hit a batsman. So that must have been a lot of fun to watch. Um, so, yeah, Harper was hit um, by a uh, struck ball in the hand in his one appearance for the team, and that was probably the end. Now, all the smart Alex out there will say, I probably should have looked at the uh, player biography first instead of wasting a whole bunch of time looking in at uh, what exactly um, uh, is said in the old newspaper coverage of that game. Um, when we scroll down here, um, what we see is that 
Let's see here. Finally, just as Chance's pennant was not preordained, nor was Harper's final inning. He tore a nail from the thumb of his pitching hand practicing on May 22nd, pitched with some difficulty in the exhibition game on May 29th, before Chance handed his new pitcher a starting assignment on June 6th. It was not a trivial one at the polo grounds, with the Cubs three games up on both the Giants and the Pirates when the day began. Harper retired Roger Bresnahan and George Brown before facing Dan McGann. These are all names that we know, of course, from 1908. The Giants' first baseman last laced a smash that years later Harper would tell an interviewer caught the sore thumb and literally smashed the end off, leaving the bone exposed on top. Holy cow. Do I really believe that? Can you hit a, a baseball so hard that, like, your thumb has, like, like all the skin taken off of the top of it so you can see the bone? I doubt that that's really the case. I have a hard time... Um, Imagining that one, but um, thus would prove that McGann accomplished what he could not do six years earlier, ending Jack Harper's major league career. I have to go back through and read through the rest of this one. But, um, yeah, he uh, ends his major league career there with that game against the Giants. The point of all this, of course, is that you have a problem if you're playing with the 1906 Cubs, right? Because what are you going to do? I mean, Jack Harper, it looks like he can play with you, but he only had a single game appearance, and then he was gone. And that single game was what? It was the start. So that's not going to work. Let's go look at another one that always comes up, which is the 1902 Pirates. And uh, let's see if Baseball Reference can find it. There you go. 1902 Pirates have a few more pitchers, but you run into the same issue, right? They're really, the bulk of the innings is taken up by only five guys. Almost all of their games are complete games. They're almost all starts and complete games. So you have that problem to begin with, right? But note that it's not 100% of the games. It's, like, it's something like 90%, right? And then you have four other pitchers. There's Harvey Cushman. We don't know if he was a righty or a lefty. Warren McLaughlin, you know, we don't know much about him. And these guys are all starters. Three games pitched, three started. Four games pitched, four started. Three complete games, three complete games. If you're doing it realistically, it's not going to work. It's not going to work right. We know all about Harvey Cushman, who was the worst pitcher on one of the best teams in baseball history. Ed Poole um, pitched a little bit, and then of course Honus Wagner pitched a little bit too. So you can always put uh, Honus Wagner in as your uh, pitcher <laughs> for if you want to play with the 1902 Pirates. How about that? I'm kind of interested to know what happened here, and of course, not going to tell me much about Ed Poole, unfortunately. Uh, if we look at his game logs in 1902, we might be able to figure this out. Yeah, he had a single start against uh, Boston, lost 10 to 5, threw eight innings, gave up four runs. Um, and uh, probably wasn't a very pretty game. I bet we could probably go through this one and um, figure out exactly what happened. A actually, he didn't start that game. It was Jack Chesbro who started and gave up six runs, and then Poole gave up four, so um, I'm not sure exactly what was happening with those statistics. Honus Wagner, on the other hand, did um, have a little bit of pitching in 1902, <laughs> the only season he pitched, and he pitched in the second game of a do doubleheader on September, uh, what was this, September uh, 5th, Nobody there, so they were playing in Boston. There's only 3,000 people there in attendance. Um, and Wagner um, came in after um, an inning and two thirds and pitched the rest of the way in this game that was shortened probably by uh, darkness. Boston won 12 to 1, um, which is an embarrassing defeat again for one of the best teams of all time. Um, but yeah, there's uh, Honus Wagner as your relief pitcher extraordinaire. But this is the problem that you have, right? If you're going to do like a greatest teams type project, you're almost certainly going to have the 1902 Pirates in it. But as soon as you decide to put in the 1902 Pirates, you run into the same problem you have in the 1906 Cubs, right? Which is that there's just no pitching. You could, in theory, put all the dead ball era teams together, right? And um, hope that you have a, a game that has, you know, the ability to handle this. I mean, but is that actually feasible is the question. So I haven't looked at this ahead of time. You have them playing against, like, the 1919 Reds, for example. You see sort of a similar issue here, but things are still a little bit better, you know, packed out. Remember, we talked last time about the 1905 White Sox. You got teams with five pitchers, teams with, like, eight or seven. Here's a team with ten that likely might also appear in your sort of, like, greatest teams, you know, whatever setup. Um, if you want to put on a team like the 1914 Boston Braves, well, then you have a few more pitchers to choose from, don't you? And then things are a little bit more evenly spread out. Anyway, you look at it, though, this is a problem, right? You just The problem you have is that if you're playing with modern teams, you just don't get pitchers who pitch 330 innings in a season, right? You'd have to be able to pitch, you have to be able to play with some sort of error or some sort of setting that would allow you to compete with a smaller bullpen than you would in than um, you would normally have for a modern season. Either that, or you've got to make up a bunch of uh, players on your own. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll talk with you guys a little bit more later. Talk to you then. Bye.